Okay, hi guys, it's Hessel. Um, the other day, I assigned and collected from you guys uh, from the A plus physics circuit, circuit analysis worksheet or series and parallel worksheet, whatever you want to call it, uh, numbers 4 through 7, 14 th uh, and, and 14 through 22. So let's start with number 4. And uh, so you can pull up on another device or as a hard copy. Uh, the worksheet uh, to refer to, um, I have it in front of me, you should have it in front of you. So number four, um, a nine volt battery is connected to a four ohm resistor and a five ohm resistor as shown in the diagram below. What is the current in the five ohm resistor? Um, so I can see that it's a series circuit. There is one loop there. So there's one loop, I just drew the circuit um, and I can see coming from the positive end, going around, going through the two resistors and back that is a series circuit, there are no branches off. I see on the left this uh, set of cells, this battery, there's nine volts on that guy, that's our total voltage. And I can see that the first resistor is four ohms. Technically it's the second one if we're following the direction of the current, but whatever. Um, then we have five ohms as the other resistor. And it wants to know what is the current in the 5 ohm resistor. So for this guy right over here, it wants to know what is the current I in this resistor here. So yeah, we already identified the type of circuit. It is a series circuit. Um, but that's the first thing you do with a circuit problem is identify whether it's a series or a parallel circuit. I feel like the series circuits are easier to identify by their one loop um, with no branches. Uh, but when we come across a parallel circuit, uh, we can see that frequently the way parallel circuits are drawn, the um, resistors are parallel to each other. Uh, so just to illustrate that for a sec, here would be a series circuit. That battery is kind of iffy, apologies. There's a series circuit, one loop, two resistors in parallel. Another terrible battery. I like to say that in parallel they piggyback, like one piggybacking off of another. Um, or that in series, these guys are kind of, it's as if they're holding hands. Um, so it's like arms holding hands. Don't hold hands in a pandemic. But yeah, so holding hands right there. Whereas um, with with parallel connections, I like to think say that they're like going for a hug. Like if this was one resistor right here, and this guy, his arms came across and was like, oh, I'll give you a hug. And kind of like the arms going across it. Um, so, but yeah, that's that's the difference in the connections. So I advise that if you're doing series and parallel circuit questions, you make a table of values. You don't always have to have the table. Like for instance, in a series circuit, if they said that the current in the four ohm resistor was one amp, then what would be the current in the five ohm resistor? Um, it's the same current. So if you know the current in one, you know the current in the other. So if it's one amp in one resistor, it's one amp in the other. You don't need a table for that. Um, but if you're not really sure how to approach it and you're making a list of given information anyway, like you should, you should organize your information in a table. So let me show you what I mean. With our table, we have rows and columns. And so the columns are going to be for voltage, current, and resistance, uh, V, I, are. If you're also working with power, you can make another column for power, but honestly, if I know of these three, V, I, and R, if I know two of them, I can get the power. Uh, P is V, I, P is I squared R, and P is V squared over R. So with two of those things, I can calculate the power. So just saying, we don't need that right now. And then for our table, we have the individual values. We have one, we have two, we would make a third and a fourth if they existed, they don't. So then we have the total values. 
And with the information I have, I know that my total battery voltage coming out of the power supply is 9 volts. And I can see that my resistor values are 4 ohms and 5 ohms. R1, 4 ohms, R2, 5 ohms. And what they want to know is what is the current in the 5 ohm resistor. Well, with this information, I can really only do one thing. I know that um, I can go for the total resistance right there, or what we call R equivalent. And I know that in series, R equivalent is R1 plus R2. So that would be 4 ohms plus 5 ohms. And so REQ is 9 ohms. So I figured that out, that R equivalent is 9 ohms. Now I'm going after the current in the second resistor. Um, and I don't know anything about the voltage there yet. But one thing I can do is I can get the total current because I know the total voltage and I know the total resistance. And so R equals V over I. R equals V over I for each individual thing in a circuit and R equals V over I for the whole circuit itself. And so R, send me, send me email. Um, R equivalent is V total over I total. And I'm going after I total. So I can say that R equivalent is nine ohms. is nine volts over I total. And so if I cross multiply, I get that the total current is one amp. Okay, let's revisit our table. So now I know that the total current is one amp. And one thing that I know about series circuits is that if I know one current, I know all of the currents. I know that I total equals I1 equals I2, etc. So if I know the total current and I do, I then also know the individual currents. And just like that, voila, we now know the current through the 5 ohm resistor that is 1 amp. So the answer to number 1 I'm sorry, the answer number four is choice one, which is one amp. Okay, let's move on to number five. Now this is a set five, six, and seven together. Um, and it says basic answers to questions five through seven on the information below. 18 ohm resistor and a 36 ohm resistor are connected in parallel with a 24 volt battery. A single ammeter is placed in a circuit to read the current read the total current, um, five draw a diagram of this circuit. So this guy is a parallel circuit. I have two resistors, 18 ohms and 36 ohms. I have a battery and I have an ammeter placed in the circuit to read total current. Number five. So it said it's a parallel circuit. So I start off with my battery. I have to have the same number of long lines and short lines. I'm gonna draw this more carefully than the disasters I drew earlier. There we go, beautiful, uh, if I say so myself. And so there is my battery. And then I have two resistors, one. And then since it's in parallel, I'm not gonna draw them holding hands. I'm not gonna draw them in a single loop. I'm gonna draw them parallel to each other, piggybacking off of each other, hugging each other, nicey nice. Now it says there's an ammeter in a circuit to measure total current. If this were a series circuit, I could put that ammeter anywhere because the current is the same at all points. But this is not series, it's parallel. And so the currents are different in each branch. So if I want total current, I don't care if it's series or parallel. If I want the total current, I'm going to put my ammeter in series right next to the battery. It doesn't matter what side. I'm going to put it on this side because why not? 
I could put it on the other side too. I could put it here, 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 because those are all spots that are in series right next to the power supply. Um, I do not want to put it here or here. Those or here or here or here or here. These guys right here, this one and this one, would be measuring the current through this resistor. Um, these spots here, 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 and here would be measuring the current through this resistor. It's not going to be the total current. So there's our drawing. Let's move on to number six. Okay, number six um, asks for what's the equivalent resistance of the circuit. Um, and there's a reason why we call it the equivalent resistance. They actually mean the total resistance, but it's not literally the total, so they call it equivalent. Um, but I am feeling like I'm going to want to organize my information. I have to write down my givens anyway, so I'm going to do that. It is a parallel circuit, parallel circuit. Um, so I'm going to make a table. I have two resistors. So here we go. Voltage, current, resistance, resistor one, resistor two, totals. Okay, and it says 18 ohm, 16 ohm. So these are the individual resistors. Uh, sorry, that's 36 ohms. 18 and 36, and then the total voltage is 24 volts. Oh, I got another email. Look at me. And I can see from my table that actually I can get the equivalent resistance um, in one step. I don't even really need the table, but the table is good to organize the information. So there it is. All right. Now, this is not a series circuit. So we can't just be like, oh, 18 and 36 makes 54. That's in series. And so we follow the equivalent resistance equation for parallel circuits. 1 over RAQ is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So we have 18 and 36. Now, honestly, you could do this as a least common denominator thing. Obviously, the least common denominator is 36. So I would have 2 36 over uh, plus 1 36. But like, you're going to get resistances in some cases where it's like, oh, what's the least common denominator between 2.48 and 9.637? Like, what? So don't even worry about least common denominator. Just add up the two fractions, 1 over 18 plus 1 over 36. And so we wind up with 1 over our equivalent is the sum of those fractions, 0 0.083333, blah, 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 threes. Um, now, be careful here. The total, the resistance, the equivalent resistance is not 0 0.083. 1 over the equivalent resistance is 0 0.083. So... The equivalent resistance is 1 over that, which is 12. And this is also why they call it the equivalent resistance. Because if you said, oh, you know, like you said before, 18 plus 36 is 54. Um, that's for a series circuit. And for a parallel circuit, the equivalent resistance is actually less than the individual resistors. As you add branches in parallel, you wind up with a smaller and smaller resistance. And so you end up with 12 ohms as the equivalent resistance here. So let's add that in to our table, we know that the total, or excuse me, the equivalent resistance is 12 ohms. Um, now for number seven, 
with the magic of this iPad, I can just be like, boop, boop. Yep, here we are, number seven. So now we're dealing with number seven, and it says, find the total power dissipated in a circuit. First of all, the word dissipated. Dissipate is kind of like um, something that's released slowly. Uh, and so what it's referring to is heat, uh, honestly, the heat dissipation, that the heat in the circuit is released slowly. That's what they're talking about. Uh, but they're just looking for the total power. So I'm looking at the total values. I can see I have the total voltage right here. That's 24 volts. I have the total resistance right here. That's 12 ohms. And it wants to know the power. And so I know that power is VI. It's I squared R. And it's V squared over R. And with the voltage and the current, I use P is V squared over R. 24 volts squared over 12 ohms. Do not forget to square when you have to. 24 squared divided by 12, I get 48. And we all know, because we know our units so well, that the units for power are watts. 48 watts. And that's the total power dissipated in the circuit. Uh, so now let's shuffle along to number 14. I have a series circuit. 14. So it says, base your answers to questions 14 through 16 on the information and diagram below showing all work, including equations, and substitution with units. 50 ohm resistor and an unknown resistor, bum, 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 uh, a, it called R, mysterious. Uh, 120 volt source and an ammeter are connected into a complete circuit. Ammeter reads 0.5 amps. Uh, 14, calculate the equivalent resistance of the circuit. Um, well, first of all, I can see from its one loop status um, that it is a series circuit. And they're looking for equivalent resistance. I'm going to collect my information in a table. So we have how many? We have two resistors. Resistor one, resistor two, and then one, two total. And then, of course, we have voltage and we have current and resistance V. I R. I can see that our total voltage is 120 volts. And then it says that the ammeter over there on the left is 0.5 amps. I can see that this is a series circuit, so I that that ammeter could be anywhere. That's giving me the total current. But it is wired in series right next to the power supply. If you have an ammeter in series right next to the power supply, I don't care what kind of circuit it is, that is the total current in the circuit. I also know that the two resistors are 50 ohms and are unknown. And it wants to know what is the equivalent resistance of the circuit. Now, you would think at first, I was like, oh, I'll just add up the individual resistors, but I don't know the second resistor, it's just R. But I can see from making my table that I do know the total values for voltage and current. Total voltage is 120 volts, current is 0.5 amps, so I can use Ohm's law for the whole thing. REQ is total voltage over total current. 120 volts over half an amp. That gets me 240 ohms of the total or equivalent resistance. And I wasn't recording. So uh, what you missed, what I was writing while I wasn't recording, is number 15. Um, R equivalent is R1 plus R2 for a series circuit. I know R equivalent is 240 ohms. And R1 is 50. And it wants to know R2. And so R2, when you subtract 50 from 240, is 190 ohms. Mysterious no longer. 190 
Holmes. And I would have stayed as R if it weren't for you meddling kids. Now, 16 went to the power in the 50 ohm resistor. Um, I have a number of options, VI, I squared R, or V squared over R, um, but I only know the resistance. I don't know anything else. Um, but before even writing 16 down, one thing I can do, again, it's a series circuit, so if I know one current, I know them all. So if the total current is 0.5 amps, I know all of the current. And now I have enough information to solve for the power. I know the current and I know the resistance, so I can do P equals I squared R. I know that the current is 0.5 amps. I know that the resistance for that guy is 50 ohms. So the power for the 50 ohm resistor is 12.5 watts. Forgot to box this guy and this guy. Onward to number 17. So 17 has a bunch of circuits. I can see that numbers 1 and 3 are one loop. Um, number 1 is definitely one loop, and number 3 has three more resistors, but it's only one loop. But uh, choices 2 and 4 are parallel circuits. I can see that the resistors, the two resistors in choice 2, are parallel to each other, and I can see that the four resistors in choice 4 are also parallel to each other. And so the question is asking which of these guys has the greatest current? And we know from Ohm's law that would actually be the least resistance, the least R equivalent. First of all, I'm going to toss out numbers 1 and 3. Um, series circuits have more resistance than parallel circuits. As you add resistors in series, total resistance would go up, so the total current would go down. That would have the least current. If I want the most current, I'm going with a parallel circuit. And the more branches that you add in parallel, the total resistance goes down and the total current goes up. The reason why this is true is because each branch is another option for the current to flow through. So with more options, then you have l less resistance and more current. And so choice four has four resistors in parallel. One, two, three, four. And as you add more and more branches in parallel, the total resistance goes down and the total current goes up. So which one has the greatest total current? Choice four, the parallel circuit with the most branches. Now this one's interesting, 18 through 22. It gives us a table of values and it doesn't actually tell us whether it's a series of parallel circuit. But I look to the data table for clues. I can see that the currents are not the same in the three lamps and I can see that the potential differences are the same. Hmm. We know from our study of series and parallel circuits that if the voltages are the same, they must have a parallel connection. If the currents were the same, it would be a series connection. 18 went to drawing of the circuit. It makes no reference to meters, so I'm not going to include them. It does say that the bulbs are connected to a battery, so I'm going to, I will include the battery. Battery. Now these are bulbs, so you can use the symbol for a bulb. It's a circle with a squiggle in it, just like a bulb. You can use the zigzag symbol for resistor as well. Bulb one, parallel connection. Bulb 2, parallel connection, bulb 3. Now, don't do this. A lot of people draw an extra wire on the outside being like, oh, I gotta box it off. No way. Not only is that wrong, but that's a short circuit. That'll actually destroy your battery and start a fire. Bad idea. No. 19 wants to know what's the potential difference of the battery. Well, it's a parallel circuit, and so I know if 
all of the voltages are the same, they're also equal to the source voltage. So the individual voltages equals the total, which is 40.1 volts. 20 wants the equivalent resistance. I would make a table of values, but it's already provided by the question. How convenient. I don't want to add 89, 365, and 143. That would be for a series circuit. Instead, I'm going to use the equation for parallel circuits to get equivalent resistance. And there we are, our equivalent is 47.7 ohms. 21 is a great question. If you remove lamp 3, what would be the value of the bit central difference on lamp 1? In a parallel circuit, all of the lamps, all of the everything, they are independent of each other. So if I took out lamp 3, lamp 1 is unaffected. As for number 22, the same logic follows. Lamp 3 has no effect on lamps 1 or 2. Um, so removing lamp 3 has no effect on lamp 2 or no effect on lamp 1. So if I take out lamp 3, the current in lamp 2 is unaffected. I will say this. The total values do change. We know that as we add branches in parallel, total resistance goes down, so total current goes up. So if I take a branch away, if I remove lamp 3, that's going to reduce the number of branches, reduce the number of options for current to flow, total resistance would go up, and so the total current would go down. So if I remove lamp 3, the individual lamps are unaffected, but as far as total values are concerned, the total resistance would go up and the total current would go down. It's the opposite for a series circuit. In a series circuit, if I removed a lamp and then reconnected the circuit, because if there's a break, the current would stop. So if I removed a lamp and reconnected it in series, then the total resistance would go down and the total current would go up. But this is not a series circuit, it's a parallel circuit. So that's it. Number 22 was the last problem in the problem set. I hope that was helpful. As usual, if you have any questions, hit me up on Google Classroom or send me an email and, uh, and I'll get back to you. Good luck, guys. Miss you.